So today we're going to be talking about intensity. Jeff asks, um, values and hue are fairly straightforward aspects of color, but chroma seems much more elusive. Why is that, and how do you recommend students sensitize their vision to accurately judge chroma? So thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm going to have to do this by a little bit of demonstration. Um, I think the main thing really is to understand what it is, and then judging of it is like judging everything else. It's a relational matter within the context of the um, uh, situation. Uh, so. Uh, let me just show you what I what I can uh, first. Just walking through these, <clears throat> as you can see, I've set up a uh, as you can see, I've set up a, a palette here, a, a minimal clean palette. So you can <laughs> let me uh, work so I can work without uh, um, uh, whatever without um, feeling like I need to explain the palette. But I've tried to set the palette up by intensity a little bit. I brought those down, which are seemingly the most intense, and I've left the ones up that are the least intense. And all I'm gonna do initially is just walk you through, see this is my color, this is my five color palette and um, with the black and white. And so all I'm gonna do is take white and try to get, try to get this white to travel, to, I'm sorry, this red, to take a ride down here and watch what happens with its intensities. So you can see that right here, we're getting more intense, right? You can, what, I'm, what we're saying really is that the color is getting easier to see, right? It's, in other words, it's projecting more. So there's like these three levels, right? Right here of, of projectivity. Now, this one is starting to project more like maybe values projection. And as I said, when I, when I talk about the trial and error aspect of this stuff, this is all context related. So, uh, by the way, notice this turns bluer as you add more white to it also. So by the time you get down here ways and you want to maintain that certain kind of redness, you may find yourself adding, uh, I'll do it just a hint of that. You may find yourself wanting to add a little bit of orange to have it sort of feel like it's the same color. But I'm just now talking silly. The orange now, you can see the orange right away is, is the intensity of it is rather like in here. Now you could say, well, I'm saying the values of that, not the intensity. And, um, but I understand the dilemma. I just don't know how to, you know, I don't put myself into the science family <laughs> to figure this out. But, um, but, but you just have to get familiar with it by just watching the colors to color. So now you can see that of this pile now here, the most intense colors are this and this, and now perhaps this, right? And I know that this is darker, but that seems to be where this color lives at its most intense. And that's all I'm trying to do is, so if you, if you could figure out a way to, 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 to um, uh, allow yourself not to have, I think the biggest thing is you have the confusion about whether or not the uh, light is doing the projecting. Um, as I've said, you know, the light, it, it, it projects light, uh, it, it helps produce light, but values do too. So that's where you're just gonna to have to keep messing around, okay? So I'll take that same brush. Let me see if I can get the heavy bluish reds out of there. And all that's really gonna happen here is uh, we're gonna see, I'm just trying to clean my brush a bit, is we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see this color at this really intense level go toward white, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna add white, cleanest white I can find up there. All right, now, so you see what I'm doing, I'm adding white. Now you can see the intensity level, right? You can see what it's doing. I'm adding, I'm adding white and then I'm taking it away, getting gradually closer to this one. So you could, you could argue that perhaps the intensity level is greatest, right? right? You know, where is it greatest, right? I'm doing this, by the way, the light's coming both this way and that way, so I'm having to make these marks this way. But somewhere in here, you're gonna find the greatest intensity of that color. Now remember, if that color is, um, if that color is actually more orange than that, the intensity will land at a different location. So uh, I won't say much more about it, except you can see right here, say put this into this area, you can see that this seems to fly to your eye more just right here. Now is that because I'm increasing the value? Let me try to do it without increasing the value and see if you can feel the intensity of that. 
Um, so let me just now go ahead and do the blue and the green. Um, if I go all the way over to the blue side, uh, let me do the green one first. Uh, I'm a big fan of get, having oils in my brush before I start. Not turps, but oils. Um, everything seems to flow better when I do that. All right. So now down at the bottom, let's just take this. So down here somewhere, the uh, white sets, and now it's, what it's going to do is it's going to try to it's going to try to find its most intense location along this line. See what I'm doing? I'm gradually putting less and less white in. So you can see it gets most intense here, more intense right in through here than it is above it, and than it is below it. All right. There you go. I'm just adding more and more white. So that's a methodology thing. That's how you get there. Now, if this happens to be, if it happens to be a, a warmer green, like if this is added to it, Obviously, it has more potential to be intense, to be to be chromatic, um, and then uh, so yeah. So you can see the same thing that somewhere in this zone here, before you get all whited up, this thing is. Um, there we go. This thing perhaps is at its most intense. Let's keep. This is a question you could add it, put it to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Where is the greatest the, the color that projects most along this range? But to me, it probably is right about here, much like I was saying, this one probably is right about here, maybe because I did that. And this one here, you can see it somewhere in here. So that's all we mean by intensity, it's just the projection, but you said the values are making it do it. Well, you can't see a color, you can't project a color, right? That's one of those things you can say about the shadows. If you don't have a good uh, amount of color in your shadows, the shadows won't have atmosphere quality. They'll just be dead. And uh, so these colors, the blacker they are, the more dead they are, right? All right. So I'm going to try to do the same thing with the, um, simply do the same thing with the blues. And um, I'll set myself some white down here. And I don't have a particularly best way of doing this. It maybe is a best way. By the way, you guys who have messed with the Munzel wheel are seeing something like this go on, right? If I remember right, we did this sort of thing, and then we cut out the squares, and then we, we separated them from each other, so we could see them more clearly. But you can see I'm already heading up here toward a very, pretty intense blue. Not a light blue, but pretty intense. So here I am going back into the lights, whites, seeing when it starts dying again, when it stops being projected. But you can see there's a range where it lives at its most projective. So if I can use my whites up here, just a little bit more, and then just keep using them and using them and using them and using them. I think you'll see where the range is, right? So it's in each of these dark cases, the most intense area seems to be sitting here, uh, which is, by the way, not a dissimilar value. It's not exactly the same, obviously, uh, as this, but it's not too dissimilar from that value. The, the yellows, obviously, will never, will never be that value. Uh, they'll be light from the beginning. So you start with these really intense colors, and they don't have a, much place to go. You could say no place to go but down. Uh, so let's just do that and see what happens. Here's the, here's the white. So now I'm going to grab some of this yellow and just start adding white to it. And of course, you can decide, looking at your screen, you probably can see where the most intense is. And what I'm really trying to find out is where it really isn't intense anymore because of the addition of white. Now, it's a funny thing because intensity, as I said before, I, there is the science about these things, but I'm not interested in the science. I'm interested in what the pigment can do. And you can say if it's the science of the pigments, that's okay, but not the science of spectrum and all that sort of stuff. So then it winds up being a correct, you know, you wind up correcting things. So if you happen to have a color on your canvas, a, a, a particular chroma on your canvas of any color, you should be able to look across and see if the chromatic levels are the same. If you have another one that's just behind it, you should be able to, to notice. Well, it'd be, I suppose it'd be like if you look at this spot right here, you can notice that uh, that this is not as intense or that this is not as intense as that, right? Those kinds of things. Um, sometimes people talk about the color quality in it, the intensity thing is where the color shows itself the most, where it's revealed, where it really comes comes to itself, it comes to life. And so there's words like life, <laughs> intensity, chromatic, um, chroma, all those things are in the category. Uh, and so you can also see with the green, though, that if I were to, in the yellow, I mean, if I were to add, let me go ahead and make sure that yellow is really visible to you. So I've added lights, white here, and getting lighter and lighter, and then somewhere in here it really does die seriously. 
you know, so the question is up here, is that its best? But the pile here sort of is deceptive. I need to really get the paint flat and then go. So you can see it's probably at its best there, uh, most intense there. I'm not so sure uh, um, I'm answering your question, Jeff, but I'm, I'm just talking about the sort of things that go through my mind uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing this. So it's self-evident that these guys are going to be dead really fast if I add black to them. Uh, and they're also going to be um, um, but so are these, I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say. So if I take this yellow brush I've got here and put black into it here, shall we say, start working down the other way, right? Now I'm trying to use black because I don't really want the color to change as much as it would if I added a different color to it. But I'm just darkening it with dark, with black, which is the most non-colored thing we can use. And, uh, you know, I use this, this with this for certain things, and I use black with that for certain other things. But you can see there's a certain intensity, even way up here in this black, that rather resembles the best part of this, of this, uh, of this intensity in here or here. You know what I mean? So, so the so so yellow stays black a long, stays intense a long time through through the values. So you can follow. I think that there, that's what's happening there. That somewhere, somewhere in here, and then it's once it gets to black, it's dead as a doornail, right? Then it gets to that thing where you can't see color, and that's again where we talk about the word inky. So the no color moment there. So you can see that all these would do that. Let me do the orange one. I hope this is coming across to you. This, this isn't. This, this is the least of the rocket science that we do here, right? So here we go, let's take this. You can see this is dead, pretty dead already, right? So there we are with that, getting blacker and blacker. Let's try it again. I just want this to stay alive a little longer here. There we go. And there you go, adding black, adding black, getting darker. And then of course getting to inky, which is the serious black like that, where it really almost doesn't show its color. Now I recommend you use black, by the way, to darken with when you want the green instead of blue, I mean, or something else. When you want the orange to maintain its orangeness, its warmness, go ahead and um, uh, keep using black. If you add, I don't have to show you this, if you add green to that, it's going to neutralize it and turn it into a brown. If you add, um, but if you add blue to it, it's going to, any of the reds, it's going to turn them rather toward a purple or in that case, also a brown. So I hope you can see what I'm talking about. You can see that I'm not going to show you this. You can see that if I add black to any of these, they're all going to wind up in this zone. Uh, there may be a reason why I should do that too. Um, you know, that issue of whether when we get out here, see the darkness itself is something, but when you get out here and you still have color, but it's more no color than, than, than it was a minute ago, it's getting closer and closer to this black thing which suggests no color. By the way, once you add white to this, it starts actually getting to a, you might call a chromatic level, it appears to have more color, black does, when you just add white to it. But if we can just say that for now, this all we're trying to do is show you that there's a point you get out here where the color is almost non-existent, just by, by the addition of a non-colored item. So, all right, so I don't know what else to say about this, but now when you're sitting there painting and you have a spot that needs more intensity, you would simply have to do that. You'd have to play around and, 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 and get them right to each other. So the trick in all of this stuff is just keep watching two colors at once. Um, if you, 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 you actually could hit these notes, right? You know, you go out there and hit these notes. If I said, can you hit me, say, say this value of all these notes, you should be able to do it and you should be able to get the intensity right at such and such a value. One thing I found is when you're trying to figure out the intensity, it's easier to get it when you find uh, other colors where you absolutely know they're the same value. And then you can compare the intensity within that value. It actually works. It, it, it gets rid of one problem. You know it's not a values thing. And, uh, and by the way, the way you know it's not a values thing is you put that color. What did I just have in my brush? If you put this, let me see if I got a cleaner. <laughs> don't have any cleanness. I didn't come over here with terps in my hand to really get this clean. So, But if you, if you actually want to know if two colors are the same value, just put them side by side. So I'm going to try to do this without wrecking what we've already shown you, I'm taking the life out of these colors. Let's say this here, right? So you say this value, what value is this like? And you put a mark down here and it's not like that, it's not like this. This value is like, there it is, up in here somewhere, right? So this value, there it is, that's probably the same value as this right here, right? You know what I'm doing. 
And so if I, if obviously if I took something as we get further down, I could have put it there. And you start seeing though that when you put them side by side, you can actually see if they disappear or don't disappear. Let me get this a little lighter and then put it down there. And so you can see it's getting closer to being the same value as this area. It's probably, it's more like the value of that area. Do you see the value of this? And so, but if you put them side by side, that gives you that chance to say, you can just touch them there. By the way, the use of your palette is such that, that you have this opportunity. That's what it's for, is for you to do these side by sides right down here. So if you have a color that you already have hit and, and you know it's intensity because the puddle is sitting there, then just take your, um, uh, the other color of the value you want and put it next to the puddle of the same value. So if it's a green, for example, just bring it over and set it there. Let's see if I can get a, this green to do something for me. So here's a green at such and such a value. So you, what is that like? Oh, it's like something down here, right? There it is, probably maybe there. So somewhere here, you should be able to set these one on top of the other and see it's clearly dark here. I don't know which, where was I here? And it's, and it's, so this part here, somewhere in here, it's gonna start disappearing and be lost. There you are, somewhere in that zone, it's the same value as the red. And then you can see which one is more intense too, side by side. But that's where the values are the same and the intensities might appear different. All right. Uh, but you can see plainly, by the way, that when a value is darker than another value, you can see there's a silhouette there. There actually is a shape being made. When there isn't, you have what we call lostness, and lostness is a very important function. It helps you to know the values are the same. So now when you have two different colors of the same value, and you know they're the same value, you can easily see which one is the most chromatic if you put them side by side. As I said, that's really the great use of the palette itself. So, yeah. Um, there's not much else I can say. I mean, obviously, when you when you do mix, and if I had another brush, I'd probably show you. But if you when you do mix a yellow with an orange, you can see that these two are going to give you something, and that gets to be a lot of fun when you start saying, "Oh, this plus this is going to give me." Well, this guy plus almost anything is going to give you more intensity, because um, <clears throat> it's so intense. Or this one plus anything except the one that. But if you put it, if you put it into a neutral, if you put it into a, an atmosphere where it neutralizes, of course, it won't do anything. And the only other thing I try to do is when I have colors of the same, if I'm trying to hit a, 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 to adjust a color note that's the same intensity but greener, then I try to say use, I'm uh, trying to make this color note right here a little greener, I'll try to get the most intense version of that green you know, that matches the value and then try to do my broken color matching that as best I can, right? Make the adjustment with these colors matching. I, don't, I really didn't have that value right, but but I tried to use, make sure this intensity appears the same and that the, uh, and that the um, chroma appears the same, which is starting to do a little bit right there. Again, I can just mix this over here to the side, really hunt a great, there's a really intense color that starts looking like it matches some of this stuff in here, right? Same value but, and same intensity. And that's the kind of stuff that you wanna be aware of and see, and, you know, in, in oil paint, some of these things work well, these broken color things, and some work less well, but you're gonna find, you're gonna find plenty of times when it's gonna be the perfect thing, uh, that broken color combination at the same intensity. Remember, if you don't put the same intensity color into a spot where you already know it's got that glow, you'll kill the intensity. That's the reason, if you, but you still may have to move it over toward the blues or toward the orange side. So that's gonna be always the issue with, it, with, this, with this story. If you had, oh gee, <laughs> let's see, I can paint myself or not. All right, so if I have this, say this this is this here, you can see as I go down here, somewhere in this zone here, this is similar in value, maybe not as intense, right? So you'd have to be thoughtful about whether you want this to become more intense, because if you put this in, it could become more intense, but it'll definitely become more orange. And, uh, and so you, you have to maintain that though, say when you had your intensity. So when you get the color better, keep checking back to see if the intensity is maintaining as you're looking at the whole. Remember? So you, you know, the, but the question that Jeff asks is uh, how do you sensitize your vision to it? I don't know, I don't know precisely except if I keep finding words like, like color quality. Now that's not a color quality means more than that, but, but the, when the color really comes to itself, you know, it's gonna be at its most intense, you can really see that color and say, oh, I know what color that is. 
And uh, so you'd say this, you wouldn't know quite what it was till you get down to this range here where you start saying, oh yeah, yeah. That's where it starts becoming most, the most itself, most projective by intensity. So you can see it becomes more and more projective down here further by value, but not by intensity. And that's the kind of stuff. I don't know how else to tell you to do that, uh, to become more sensitive to it. You can play around with this, but I find just painting from nature and making sure you have on your palette the three aspects in your mind, in the palette of your mind, the three aspects of, um, of uh, color. And that is, what are the values? And get that right first. And that's, again, the side-by-side -side thing. Uh, by, you know, use your palette and get match it side-by-side. -side. And the second part, though, is the, um, the hue, which is what you're striving for. But I, I find that it's more important to get the intensity next. And then when you're going for the hue, be doing it at the right intensity. So matching by intensity, you just have to look at it and see that they all sort of tend to project. You can see that certain parts of this tend to project better, like say from here to here to here, they seem very similar in their intensities. So, okay, I hope that's coming across to you, um, Jeff. Um, yeah, and I, you know, in the answer, I don't know, you say it seems more straightforward those are more straightforward because, I mean, they simply are. Dark and light are much easier to understand, and, um, and so are uh, hue. And so you think you're there. I don't know what else it is about it. You say, when you say, what color is that truck? The answer is always blue. But if you, but if you actually had this chromal range, you'd say, it's a, it's a dark blue. It's a blue so dark you can't see the intensity of it. Or you'd say it's, it's and, and so, so you could have measures in your mind of a scale of one to 10 in the blues and say, this is the most intense blue I've ever seen or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but of course, this whole thing about living in the value, you live in the value you're in, get that value right. And then you're gonna find the intensity within that value. So uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm not sure I'm, I'm really dealing with this well enough, but it's, I hope it's obvious to what I mean by it. You know, I've tried to find the intensities out here you know, and so, and, and then you just simply say, we do know that at certain values, like say it's at such and such a value, you find these values, these color, these intensities sort of coming together. This one comes deader, this becomes dead. They all become deader, say down here, as the lights get more involved in it. And, uh, and they all become sort of deader up there. So there's this range where these show these differences, their real character, whatever that is. It's, it's the character of pigment. And some people want to argue it's the character of the spectrum. It may be partially, it, well, I mean, everything's on the spectrum, so. But, uh, but our dilemma isn't really with the spectrum, it's with, with what paint will do. So you're just gonna have to work with it. Yeah. I don't think that's uh, gonna be definitive, but I am looking for uh, more feedback and I'll try to get back to you on the subject, uh, Jeff, if you like. Uh, all right, let's leave it at that for this time and uh, see you uh, in the next one. Don't, don't fail to, uh, to keep on doing what you're doing, which is subscribing, donating, uh, commenting, and uh, sharing. Much appreciated, and uh, we do hope to keep these coming through for you. All right, great. See you next time.